so yes guys as i have promised we are now with this particular thing which is known as weighted average so in case of weighted average there are certain things we need to understand and remember because i've already told you in case of weighted average the first thing is it's average with weight where you need to use weights in uh, your exams or in let's say in your question and everywhere now weight is nothing but frequency weight is what it is frequency like whenever we call weight it's generally denotes as frequency i give you one example first let's say let's think about this number 1 1 1 2 2 2 2 3 3 3 4 4 4 and 3 and 3 if i ask you to find the average of this thing what you can do the first thing you can do is like simply you can add all of these things and you can just add and you can divide by the number of observation which is 3 plus 4 7 and 2 9 right so you can add nine things and you can divide it by nine then you can get the average but this thing can be also represented as this way right let's say the variable is x which is 1 which is 2 and which is 3 and let's say the weight or the frequency so one occurs how many times three times two occurs how many times four times and three occurs how many times two times so this thing i can call this is x1 this is x2 this is x3 that is all the values of x this i can call f1 f2 and f3 this is the frequency of x so my weighted average which i call weighted average so this thing can be represented as 1 into 3 that is 3 times it occurs plus 2 into 4 4 times it occurs plus 3 into 2 2 times it occurs divided by 3 plus 4 plus 3 so this is like the concept of weighted average so what is it this is x1 so i can write it as as simple as x1 f1 plus x2 f2 plus x3 f3 upon f1 plus f2 plus f3 so this is the basic concept of weighted average i hope i have made you understood what is weighted average it is the same average as because it one thing is repeating uh, again again and again we are using this concept of weighted average so that we can do less calculation we can do more like multiplication and addition so the same thing repeats so whenever same thing repeats we generally use the concept of weighted average right now think about it now think about one uh, different case let's say mm, this is like uh, if the n groups have the frequencies like the weights like f1 f2 f3 fn and their averages as a1 a2 a3 an so the weighted average is this thing what i have already discussed a1 f1 plus a2 f2 plus a3 f3 dot dot an fn divided by f1 f2 f3 dot dot fn fn instead of actual frequencies using ratio of frequency will yield the same result so this thing i will also explain you in detail don't worry about it this thing i'll explain you in detail like instead of like actual uh, like the observation or actual weight we can use the ratio of weight as well this is a very important thing we will discuss it now let's go for the next one think about a class let's say a and b with respective strengths of 30 and 20 the average marks of section a and of section b students in an examination are 50 and 60 respectively find the average marks of the students of section section a and b together now think about it in this way like the strengths are what 30 and 20 right so i can say like uh, the frequency and the x so in the frequency is 30 and 20 this is for section a this is for section b and what is the average marks of section a the average marks of section a is uh, what it is 50 and the average marks of section b it is 60 so if i need to find the weighted average if i need to find the weighted average so what i need to do what i need to do i just need to use the formula and what is the formula that is 50 into 30 plus 60 into 20 upon 30 plus 20 right So this is like I can say this is fifteen to thirty is fifteen hundred. So this is fifteen hundred plus this is twelve hundred upon fifty. So this is nothing but twenty seven hundred. As you make calculations are correct upon fifty, right? So it is the answer. It has to be like fifty four. So what is the average then? The average is fifty four. So I can directly find the average weight of the students as fifty four, right? So this is one way of solving this question obviously you can see that now think about this question a and b with ratio of number of students is 2 is to 3 the average marks of section a and b is 50 and 60 find the average marks now in this case that like you can see we have given with the ratio so we can say also the same thing a and b let's say a and b 
and let's say this is x and this is f frequency. So frequency the ratio is given 2 and 3 let's say. If 2 is to 3 given we can take 2 and 3 and this is again 50 and 60. Now what is the average again 50 into 2 plus 60 into 3 upon 2 plus 3. So if you solve this you will get the average is 54. Now think one thing very carefully. Very carefully you should think one thing. Like the first thing you have to understand here is in the previous question when it is 20 and 30 the answer is 54. In this question when it is 2 is to 3 the answer is 54. And if you take the value as let's say in case of 2 and 3 and if you take the value 6 and 9 also the answer is 54. So this is what it means. It means if the ratio of frequency is same the average is same. So average is not dependent on the quantity itself. Average is dependent on the ratio of the quantity. So you need not to have the exact quantities. If you have the ratio of the quantities, then also you can find the weighted average. Very important concept. So it's not only about the quantity, it's majorly about the ratio of the quantity. Clear? So if you understand this, let's go for the next. So now think about this question where the ratio of the marks is given. So what is the ratio of the marks? That is, let's say 5 is to 6. That is the ratio. So the marks can be 5, 6. The marks can be even 50, 60. And let's say the frequency is given is 20, sorry, is 30 and 20. So what is the average for this two thing? That is 35 into 30 plus 6 into 20 upon 30 plus 20. This is an A value. Another value is 50 into 30 plus 60 into 20 upon 30 plus 20. But remember in those two cases we will get two different values. So if the ratio of the score or ratio of the score is given remember we cannot find the exact average but if the ratio of the frequency is given we can find the exact average so in this way the answer of this question is cannot be determined what is the answer cbd we cannot determine anything from here so i have made you understood like where exactly it is determinable and where exactly it is non-determinable so please be very careful while understanding this the next one, like this is a question again. In an academy, there are three groups, juniors, sophomores and seniors with 60, 50 and 40 students respectively. The average marks of the three groups of the student is 60, 81 and 90. What are the average marks of the groups together? <clears throat> so I can use all the things we have learned now. So the frequency is given 60, 50, 40. So I can take it is also 6 is to 5 is to 4. That's it. And we know what is the score. The score are 60. So 60 into 6 obviously. Plus what is it? 81. That is 81 into 5. Plus what is it? 90. So 90 into 4. Whole divided by 6 plus 5 plus 4. So I can use it. So what I did basically. If I saw the frequency is given. So I just find the ratio of the frequency. And I made the question smaller. Right. Now what is the answer? The answer 16 into 6 is how much? 360. And what is 81 into 5? That is 405, assuming my calculations are correct. And what is 490? That is 360. A whole divided by what? 15. Now if you are dividing everything by 15, so what I can do? Without even dividing, I can divide the individual. So 360 by 15, what is it? So 360 by 15 is 24. Okay. And 405 by 15 is how much? That is 15 to the 100 per. So that is... 27 plus 24 so I'm individually divide with 3 so what is your answer that is 72 plus 5 plus 3 75 is the answer right 24 24 24 72 plus 3 75 so what are the average marks of the three groups together it is 75 now you have understood how simply we can solve this question how simply we can avoid lot of calculations this is how we can do that right so let's go and check the next question then now think about this, there are two sections X and Y of a class consisting 25 and 32 students respectively. If average weight of section X is 38 kg and Y is 35 kg, then the, find the average of the whole class. So what you need to do, you need to find the average of the again whole class, right? So there are two sections, uh, the students given 25, 32 and the average weight is also given 38 and 35. So what you need to find the average weight of the whole class. So in this case, what you need to do, that is 38. So this is the simple question. That is 38 into 25 P 
people is there obviously plus 35 into 32 whole divided by 25 plus 32 so you just need to do this calculation so this is a basically calculation best question i'm just showing you how exactly you use this concept of weighted average to ease your calculation right now let's go for this question iron mixes three varieties of tea costing rupees 20 30 and 24 per kg and sells it at rupees 30 per kg making a profit of 20 percent the mixer contains one kg of first variety then the quantity of the second and third variety can never be what right so now i need to find what it cannot happen so it's got teen cheese like what is the price 20 30 and 24 so like then 20 30 and 24 clear okay if the mixture contains one kg of first variety this is one kg this is let's say x this is y right and he sells it in rupees 30 per kg making a profit of 20 percent so what is the cost price the cost price is 30 divided by 1.2 right so the cost price is 30 divided 1.2 is 25 so the cost price is 25 i directly use the shortcut because i know 1.2 cp equals to selling price so that's why i directly use it 30 by 1.2 that is 25 so i got the cost price i got the average cost price right now from this equation how i can find the average how i can find the average check that is 20 into 1 plus 30 into x plus 24 into y whole divided by 1 plus x plus y is equal to 25 is not it correct yes now if i solve this thing i'll get 20 plus 30 x plus 24 y is equal to 25 plus 25 x plus 25 y now if i solve this thing i'll get what that is 5 x minus y is equal to 5 5x minus y is equal to 5. So that's the thing I get after solving this. Now you need to find that the quantity of the second and third variety can never be. So check with 2 and 5. If I check x equals to 2 and y equals to 5. So this is 5x. So that is 5 into 2 minus 5. Is it how much? It's 5. So it is possible. 4 and 15. 5 into 4 minus 15. 5. Possible. 6 and 25. 5 into 6 minus 25 equal to 5. Possible. Let's check 7 and 20. 5 into 7 minus 20 is 15. Not possible. So what is your answer? D is your answer. Because D is the possibility which cannot have X and Y. So this is how you can solve this type of questions. I hope I make you understand this. Right? Because this is something where you need to have a lot of focus while solving this type of question. You can see how exactly we can solve this type of question and what exactly is the importance of this type of question. Now, as you have already learned about all of these things, which basically I am summarized about weighted average. So weighted average depends on the ratio of the frequency. Very important. Second thing, weighted average is also is not dependent on is not dependent on the quantity itself. But if the ratio of the like variable is given, you cannot find the actual average, remember. So in this case, we just find like, like the ratio after having, like we have just find the average. In mixed allegation, we will do just the opposite also. We will do, we will find like ratio from average. We have find like from ratio average, we will find from average ratio as well. And we will discuss this question in a new idea as well. Like how exactly we can use mixture allegation in weighted average also. Because one thing you have understood like by solving this question, weighted average is nothing but just the average. But when it is mixture also, the mixture is something where we get the average thing. We are mixing X, Y, Z and everything. But one thing you have to remember, this weighted average is slowly transitioned to mixture allegation. And that's how we exactly learn the entire thing, which is also mixture allegation, which is also weighted average and which is also uh, like, you know, mixture which is also allegation but before that like let me give you one another brief so what we have learned already we have learned all these questions so here you understand like this kind of question is sometimes it can be calculative so in this case you have to understand how to calculate faster to solve this type of question similarly in the second case also uh, 
we have already learned like in this academy where the three terms are there and we use the ratio to understand this thing similarly in this case it is not cannot be determined in this case we have the use the ratio and in this case we didn't have the ratio so this is all about it what we have learned about weighted average right in the next class we will start with mixture allegation so see you guys in the next class and keep working and keep solving and i'm seeing you there